Photoshop is offering many great tools to edit and design precisely, which is really an essential skill to master either as a designer or Photoshop user. So in this video, we'll be learning how to use and master these tools to work precisely in Photoshop. Starting of course with rulers, which you can see in here on top side and also left side. And if you don't see them, you can go to view. Then you can select rulers or use shortcut command or control R, which is really handy shortcut to remember. And by default rulers units will be similar to your documents. So here for instance, we have that document in millimeters. And if we right click rulers, we can see that we have that one set on millimeters. We can be changing that one anytime to pixels, inches, or even maybe percent if you would like. And here, as you can see, we have zero point for width. And also we have zero point for height starting from here. And also we can be changing our zero point to anywhere within our document by hovering over the part and dragging our ruler. So here we can be changing zero point maybe all the way to here. Maybe starting with our typography. And anytime we would like to reset our zero point, we can be double clicking in here on top left corner. And also we have a measuring tool or another ruler within Photoshop. And you can find that in your tools by right clicking in here, you will find that one under eyedropper tool. You will find ruler tool along with note tool, count tool to count your design elements if you would like to, or take notes. However, we're gonna be experimenting with ruler tool for now, so selecting that one. And now let's say for instance, we need to measure the distance of that gap. We can be hovering over that edge and drawing a line, a straight line. We can be pressing or holding shift key to get a straight sharp line. And here we can see that we have 29.6 of millimeters for width, which is that line in here. And we have zero height and zero angles as well, since we have that one in a completely horizontal way. However, if we drag that one maybe in an angle, just like that, maybe we are getting width and height and also angle in here. And anytime you would like to be clearing your measures, you can be clicking that clear button in here. Now moving to another important tool in here, which is guides. And guides are simply lines that you can be dragging from rulers, either horizontal ruler or vertical one. And they are mainly used to align design elements and layers. So here, for instance, I used some guides to align my design elements. And let me show you guys what I mean by that. So going to view, then selecting show, then selecting canvas guides you will be seeing all these cyan lines, which are actually design guides helping me to align my layers and stay precise. So here, for instance, we can see that line in here, helping me to align my type on the same line. So we have that main title and that smaller one, and we have that type in here as well, perfectly aligned along with that rectangle, which is, by the way, something very pleasing to our eyes. And also a very important thing for each and every designer to make some sort of relationship between his design elements or his layers. And that's what makes eventually a design looks beautiful. And also don't worry guys, these guides are not going to be printed. They are only going to be existing within our file and we can be hiding them or showing them anytime by going to view once again. Then we have show. We can be hiding canvas guides or guides or even we can be clearing these guides by going to view. Then you can be selecting to clear guides, or in our case, we're gonna be clearing canvas guides. And let's see how we can be creating our guides from scratch. So let's maybe say we need to be aligning all our design elements to left side instead. So I'm gonna be hovering over ruler and dragging a line from there, holding that line in here at the start of our type. And also you can see how far we are from the start of our canvas. And if we would like to adjust our guide's position, we can be selecting our move tool and hovering over our guide. We can be dragging that one, maybe right or left. However, let's keep it as it is. And let's even turn on other smart features to help us align our elements along with guides. So going to view, we can be activating snap feature. And here you have more controls over your snap. So you can be snapping your elements to guides, layers, or document bounds or grids. And let's also turn on smart guides, go into show and make sure you select smart guides and let's see them in action. So here we have our guide set. We can be selecting that rectangle by clicking on that layer while having auto select feature enabled. 
Then I'm gonna be clicking and dragging, moving that one. And once I start moving that rectangle, we are getting those magenta lines in here, which are called smart guides. And they are helping us to build that relationship with other design elements or layers. So in that case, for instance, it will be trying to align with precision world. And the more I keep dragging that one, it will be looking for other elements. So as you can see, we have and that time, beginning and end. And we can also be holding shift to keep it on the same line. However, since we have also the snap feature enabled, Photoshop is trying to keep that one aligned and moving in the same path from its original position, of course. Now, did you see that snap to our guide? See that? It works just like a magnet. Now we can be also selecting our type, clicking that one, and maybe looking for other type layers, which are also going to be covered later in detail through that course. So holding shift key and clicking snap and moving these layers in here. See that smart guide is trying to look for any relationship in here. However, I'm going to be holding shift key and moving them to here. Now, instead of dragging each layer to left, we can be aligning them to left by going to that option in here. And make sure that you are aligning them to selection, then selecting that option where they are perfectly aligned just with one click. And let's close that panel. Now, let's see how we can be placing our guides in a very precise way. So let's deselect our layers, clicking outside. And here we can see the exact numbers for our document. While of course we don't have anything selected, we can see that in our properties panel. Now let's place a guide maybe in the center of our canvas. We can be going to view. I'm going to be selecting new guide from here. And you get to choose either horizontal or vertical one. And you can be typing position maybe after 20 millimeters or even we can be doing simple mathematics in here as well so let's type our width which is 303.02 divided by 2 and now we have a guide exactly in the center of our document and anytime we would like to remove that guide we can be hovering over that guide dragging that one all the way to here and now it's gone <laughs> just like that and also guys, here's a very handy trick. We can be converting any shape into guides. So let's select that rectangle for instance, go into view. You can be selecting new guides from shape. And that could be helpful if we would like to align other elements in here maybe, or maybe on that side and so on and so forth. So now since we know how to use rulers, guides, it's time to know how to use grids in Photoshop. So let's maybe move to that file in here. And by the way, guys, you will be finding that file in your resources. You can be practicing that one as well to place maybe a completely different grid. Anyway, let's see how we can be setting a design grid. So go on to view and let's first start by clearing guides to build new ones and then go to view once again. And before we start placing our guides, we need to be showing our grid. So go into show again and selecting grid. Or of course, you can be using that shortcut in here, command or control comma, which is very handy shortcut along with that one for guides, command or control semicolon. So anyway, let's show that one. And using that grid could be very helpful for us to imagine how we can be placing our guides or even how to build our design in a very geometric way. But before we start, let's see first how we can be customizing our grid. And of course, we can be customizing them by going to preferences or using the shortcut command or control K. Then here we have units rulers, where you can be customizing your units from here. For rulers and also for type, you can be choosing instead of points, you can be selecting pixels or millimeters. However, what's really recommended for type to keep it as it is on points, cause it's the most common one. And also for column size, you can be selecting default size for that one. And we'll be seeing columns in action in a second. However, now let's select as well guides, grids, and slices. From here, we can be customizing our guides. So we can be changing maybe color or line style, either dashed or solid line. And also you can be changing your smart guides color, which could be also nice as well if you're working on a magenta design as well. 
Then here we have grid options, and we have a grid line every two centimeters. So now we have two centimeters between those two lines, and also we have four subdivisions between them. So let's maybe set that one to one centimeter. And remember also you can be changing that one's color anytime. Now pressing OK. And now let's see how we can be setting our guides layout. Go into view, selecting new guide layout. So here we can be selecting from preset by clicking that drop down. You can be choosing maybe eight columns or we can be customizing that one. So setting maybe four columns. And let's also add rows. And let's also enable margin around our document. So we can be setting for instance 10 millimeters around our canvas, maybe as a safe design area. And also we can be changing the spaces between columns and rows by changing color value or setting a fixed width and height for columns and rows. So let's keep it like that for now, pressing OK. And let's hide our grid, pressing Command or Control, comma. And now that design grid can be our guide to place our type and our images, especially in editorial design. However, this should be also working with most of other design aspects. So now we can be placing our layers on our new grid, selecting that image and move it to here. <laughs> we can slightly distort that one a bit, pressing Command or Control T and holding shift key to drag only that side, pressing return. And now we can realign our type as well, selecting that headline type layer and also holding shift key, selecting that layer as well. Our paragraph, then we can be moving them to here. <laughs> and that rectangle in here could be a decor or other image or any design element. This is just for practicing. So I'm gonna be moving that one to here just to create some sort of relation between them. And of course, we can be hiding these layers as well in here, maybe that type along with that one. So hiding these layers and also that one. And we can start placing our design elements according to our newly created grid. So hopefully guys, you find that one helpful for you and I hope you enjoyed that one. It's highly recommended that you practice that one on your own. Take care and I'll be seeing you.